Yo, what's up, guys? It's late night here, and I just finished editing the podcast you're about to watch or listen to. I gotta say, after watching it again, there's a lot of really good information, and I think it's a really good fit for a lot of the home growers following this channel. Today's podcast is gonna be with THC Titan, and uh, he's created some pretty big name strains and been growing for over a decade. To name some of the strains that we've personally grown here, stuff like Applewood, Nana Glue, Black Hole, and recently Ocean Fruit, which the episode is coming really soon. He's going to cover some cool information like top three tips when it comes to pheno hunting for home growers and small time growers like myself. He's going to go into crossing your own, and then we're going to talk about the Ocean Fruit specifics and some really cool crosses coming soon from Square One and Robin Hood. So make sure you stick around to the end. But first, before we get into it, I want to make sure and thank the sponsor of this podcast, AC Infinity. So recently, guys, I ended up picking up a 2x4 and a 4x4 advanced grow tent system to test here on the channel. It came fully loaded with the ion board LED, complete inline ventilation system and carbon filter, clip fans, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi controller to integrate everything together, and it was all wrapped by the thickest tent that I've tested here on the channel. When I seen that it also came with fabric pots, trellis net, hangers, duct clamps, plant ties, pruning snips, and even foil tape, I was blown away and I could easily say that this was the most complete kit that I've tested yet. I was so happy with the results in fact that we actually recently picked up a 5x10 and replaced the two 5x5s that I had going here. You can use the discount code HOMEGROWTV on the website or HOMEGROWTV10 on Amazon on any purchase. All right, Titan, my man, what is up, dude? And welcome to the podcast, brother. How you doing? Thank you. Happy to be here. Finally, good to sit down and chat with you. Dude, it's been a long time coming. You know, I've been a fan of your stuff for a while. We've been growing a lot of the stuff on the channel. So we're going to cover a lot of really cool information, a lot of personal questions that I have, and a lot of the stuff from the community that are oh so familiar with your stuff. But we have a lot of questions about some history, about Titan himself, you know, a lot about you. And uh, if you don't mind, bro, let's get right into it. So Titan, let's start with your journey to becoming a breeder and how you eventually started Square One and Robin Hood. So, I mean, I've been growing for a while now, like uh, 11 years consecutively nonstop. But when I first started growing, I always knew that I wanted to breed eventually, right? So I kind of just grew for like four years and then I'm like, okay, it's time. I, I, I had a good grasp of growing. I felt like I had a good knowledge base that I wanted to create something unique, something that I really um, haven't seen in the market. And that what that's what led me to, to start breeding. Amazing. So just starting to breed, I guess at that time, you know, I, I assume I, you probably didn't start in square one already existed at the time. So lead us into like starting your first like kind of breeding projects, I guess, before even leading into to square one and, and Robin Hood Seeds very first breeding project it was like an accidental breeding project but before even square one i had like a, a male uh in a veg room and he dumped pollen during uh veg and then yeah. pollinated my little flower area i mean this was like way back when i first started so it's like a four by four and a two by four and he just like <laughs> pollinated all, all of my um flowering plants and i got some seeds from that I ran those. I'm like, hey, these are pretty cool, you know. So I'm not too terrible at selection, right? And then I, I never did anything with those, and kind of like I gave some away and whatnot, and then stopped there. And then a couple of years later, I had my intentional breeding project with uh, peanut butter breath. Uh, when Thug Pug Genetics first released those, I'm like, okay, that's it. But if you just look at the lineage on it, you can see that's going to be great, right? It has the the OGKV, the Mendo Breath, the Docido, all, all in the lineage. I'm like, okay, like those are all things I want to work with. They're already built in there. And so popped a pack of that, found uh, the male that I was looking for is OGKV dominant male, which is um, very unique. It has like that uh, duck foot leaf, leaf set to it. If you know, you know, if you just Google OGKV, you can really, you'll understand right away. Well, wow, that is weird. You know, that is unique. And uh, the male had vigor, and I selected him and hit him to some of the cuts that I've been that I was collecting for a while, like peanut butter and jealous, uh, Tahoe G, 
Gorilla Glue, you know, some of the classics, GDP. You know, I've been, I procured yeah. those over like a four year period. And that, that created my first line through Square One Genetics. That's sick. Yeah, I've, I've hopped on. And for those listening, I just, there's, a few great interviews out that Titan's done before that he goes into this as far as like the peanut butter breath. That's definitely one of the questions I wanted to bring up. I know it played a big role in your journey as far as starting to breed and it's led into creating several strains as well or signature strains from, from square one and test stuff from Robin hood. Is that correct? Yeah. The peanut butter breath. Yeah. What kind of stuff have you guys yeah. created with that so far or, or continuing that journey, I guess, so starting with that, how did that continue? What are some of the things that, that you started creating with that, that really blew you away? But yeah, so that started everything and then that moved to peanut butter and jealous. So uh, ev everything I work with now pretty much has that in, in the lineage, right? The deep lineage. And so, yeah, that, that moved on to peanut butter and jealous, peanut butter and jealous moved on to banana butter cups. Banana Buttercups moved on to Grape Rock Candy Banana Buttercups, and it's pretty much where I'm at today as far as my flagship strains. I mean, I'm always hunting, always looking for for new stuff, but that that peanut butter breath is deeply cemented in in, in the lineage of what I work with. Yeah, we've we've ran a few strains with, obviously, as you know, with with that in the lineage, as you say, and it's. Is that where we're getting like the signature? I've noticed a lot of stuff is frost heavy. You know what I mean? That that has that 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 cross and they're like very frosty. You know, when I first found Square One Genetics, when I first found some of the the crosses, again, we're somewhat new to to the adventure. You know, we weren't some of the OGs, but I just noticed right away. I was like, oh my god, just some of the bud structure, and the amount of frost on these was was just really unbelievable the journey from from that how did that lead into i guess coming back to to the question how did that lead into actually starting robin hood square one which one came first how did that go down yeah square one came first so square one is my my traditional you know breeding block i guess you would say that's where um, everything goes through the traditional routes of testing and all that gets ran uh, by me, testers, or one or the other. Sometimes I'll test all on my own uh, if I have the room, or sometimes I'll just totally allocate it to testers, or sometimes it'll be a combination of the two. But yeah, Square One came first, and then Robin Hood is more of a creative outlet for me where I don't have to work within the confines uh, that I placed on myself for square one genetics it's very rigid you know it's either it passes or it doesn't right so yep. with robin hood i can kind of it's like free form for me free form breeding is the way i think of it and i can just hey like this is great this is great let's put these together i think you guys are gonna like it i'm pretty sure i'm i'm gonna like it i love these two parents let's just see what happens Got you. Interesting. Yeah, I've never thought about it. Like when you say freeform, that's I think for a lot of us home growers, at least myself, I think that's kind of just what breeding is in general. I'm like, oh, this looks cool. This looks cool. Let's just smash them together. Whereas that's what you're kind of referring to is what Robin Hood is. is you're kind of testing freeform, I guess, going there. So what's the major difference with square one then in the sense, you know, comparing that to the freeform? What's the major difference there? Uh, major difference is square one is tested before any release. So it's been ran by me or multiple growers before it's even put out there so you'll get pictures uh to profiles and, and all that good stuff whereas robin hood it, it's made and then it's out a lot of the robin hood stuff has been just remade so you already have the luxury of already already knowing everything you'll have like to profiles pictures and all that but uh every robin hood release is is typically new unless it's a remake so it's made and then put out without testing. Yeah, no doubt. That's like, that's where that black hole right there, guys. And you've seen that picture a lot for those watching on YouTube right now on the YouTube podcast. Uh, we always have the signature, beautiful. And that was from the Robin Hood side of things, was it not? Yeah, black black hole is crazy, man. I I, I expected to be good, but not, not so great, you know. And that's the great thing about Robin Hood is like, you, I can kind of make stuff I'm like, okay, this will pair well together. And then it comes out to be great. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's, kind of focus on on that strain or something that came out great and uh put more uh work and effort into that oh that's sick 
That's really cool, dude. Coming back to, to genetics, I know there's a lot of nerds tuning into this that are like, you know, I consider myself a genetic nerd, at least an enthusiast to getting in and learning so much more about it, you know, and especially when it comes to key strains that are cornerstones or, you know, pillars to, to, to certain breeders. So peanut butter breath being one of those, is there any other strains after that or certain things that you might have picked up or started using in your strains that have become significant, something that you love that you've continued to breed with um, more and more again? Uh, my favorite strain to breed with is banana buttercups. It's just so predictable what what it'll, it will do. Uh, a lot of times when you you breed, you're like you're kind of not sure, you know how how parents will uh, mash up. But banana buttercups is uh, always predictable. It always apply a frost, a skunkiness, a gassiness, and some sort of vigor. Got you. That's sick. Yeah. And that's another one that definitely seen popping up. I knew I was going to hear about that at some point coming up and, and it's soon here in a little bit. We want to talk about what's coming next, but like what, what you got working on next, what are some of the, the new things that you're excited about? But before we do talking about the breeding side of things, when you got into a breeder from the, like from grower to breeder, what were some of the things that you learned new about the plant or your perceptions that changed about the plant transitioning from like home grower to actual breeder? Good question. Um, really just don't place expectations. So really breeding, uh, like really as grows like high expectations, right? Cause I was mostly running from a clone, but getting into breeding is like, just don't set your expectations so high. Just accept the plant for what it is. Beautiful. Do you got any specific examples maybe where you learned that in a hard way or a hard lesson learned or maybe expectations were let down in a certain way when you first started? Um, before breeding? Or maybe just getting into it or even now, anything that maybe comes up to mind. Yeah, there have been many failed projects. You know, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to combine these two parents and they're, they're going to be great. And then it goes through testing and it's like, no, this is not what I was looking for at all. You know, it's not what I was hoping for. So kind of going through that process a couple times over, it's like just really, you know, humbled me. I'm like, I was so certain like this was going to be the outcome. And then it comes time uh, to test the genetics and run the genetics. I'm like, no, it's not, it's not what I wanted, not what I expected. Got you. Yeah, I can only imagine, man. It's something I just, I often fantasize about one day crossing something, but then there's that odd, that, that over had fear of just like, what if I just create a, a complete waste of time? What if I waste a year of my life? What if I do this? And I think there's a lot to learn. That's what makes these conversations with, you know, guys like yourself who have put in the time, you know, I, I'm listening to your interviews. I know that you learned, you know, the Imperial way of at least teaching yourself, learning through different resources that you found. And now you've become a great channel for people like myself and other growers to kind of figure out what it's taking, you know, for, to, to create these genetics. Um, you're doing a fantastic job. So to transition to one that I know, is really making waves, um, so to speak, online right now. And I don't know if that's going to stop anytime soon. That's the ocean fruit, right? We finished it. We ran two phenos. We put it through testing all the way through extracts in the flower rosin. We obviously have our post-harvest analysis. We sent it to lab, the flower. We sent the, the actual flower rosin to lab. So we got a lot of data back from this. Let's take a second and talk about the parent genetics or even so before that, the history of getting to making this strain, the story behind it. I'll let you take it away, Titan, and tell us a little bit about the ocean fruit. Yeah, ocean fruit. So um, that was one of those strains that I put together. I'm like, okay, it's going to be hard for this to be a loser because the uh, Brisker OG uh, has vigor, has the high, has the gas. I'm like, okay, like classic strain. And then Purple Punch brings the, the frost and some fruity herbs, which gas and fruit together, great combination, in my opinion, because you got to get the best of uh, both worlds. You kind of pleased a lot of people with just one cultivar. And so I, I wanted to put those together and yeah, it came, came out great. It has the look, the high, uh, the color, it, it, the herbs, it has it all. And if you want to select for more fruity, you can. If you want to select for more gassy, you can. And you'll even get the peanut butter phenos that will pop in there as well. You can select for for the peanut butter turps. So that's that's why I like it a lot. And that was the main reason why I put it together. And then the Brisker OG, a lot of people may not be familiar with it. That's uh, Taha OG peanut butter breath. 
that's one of the first strains I ever made. And it is stuck by my side ever since then. I kept it around and I really enjoy my keeper cuts, heavy gas, heavy peanut butter. Very unique. Yeah, it's sick. Definitely. You've definitely made it a name for it too. You stand out on social media over the last little bit. I mean, for anyone listening or watching on YouTube right now, some of the places we can check that out, like Mr. Canucks, for example, he ran, he's run several stuff from square one. He's run Robin hood. Um, he's done the ocean fruit, for example. And I know Mr. Grow it. He even did, was it just the brisker OG as well? He did a seed to harvest on that. Is that correct? Yeah. He ran the, the brisker. He liked it a lot. I think he actually incorporated it into some of his own breeding too. Yes. Yes, he did. So it's definitely worth checking out, guys, for those that are somewhat curious. I would love to know personally, because from growing it, we've seen two beautiful phenos. This podcast is going to launch before the episode, so I won't go into the actual numbers. You guys are going to see that in the in the episode from the launch. But the two phenos were great, and, and it gave us a beautiful selection. We felt from at least talking to your audience within Discord, uh, a lot of your growers, they said, you know, we had one leaning on the purple punch side, and we had the other kind of leaning on the brisker, which was really cool for us to see and compare, especially when we got to the extracts and then the, the lab test. Um, but talking about the purple punch, where did, where did that selection come from for you as far as finding that the history and how did that end up in your lap as far as breeding? Yeah. So purple punch is a clone only cut originally bred by supernova gardens. And I was able to acquire that, uh, through another grower. So he had the cut and I was able to get it from him. And so that's a breeder cut that was selected. It's not like from seed or anything like that. And so I got in, uh, Ran it a couple of times. I'm like, man, this is pretty great. Uh, a lot of people hate on the purple punch because of the, the high. It's like, oh, it's not that strong. And, and I can see that. I mean, it, it's a, it's a pretty good high, but it's not like what it would look like. Right. So it looks super crazy. Like it's going to knock you on your ass, but <laughs> you smoke and you're like, oh, yeah, it's okay. But it just looks so insane, has great terps. And that's the, the number one reason why I wanted to work with the purple punch was for the terps. Got you. Yeah. No, it was unbelievable across and mixing with that brisker. I guess that's where we're getting a lot of the power from, huh? On, on that side is from the brisker. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah. The brisker. That's beautiful. So to come back one set, we were just talking about Mr. Canucks. And I think this is super interesting because a lot of viewers, I mean, pretty much anyone in the Canada space knows who Mr. Canucks is as far as when it comes to YouTube, Seed to Harvest videos and amazing documentaries. And a lot of us know Square One from those videos. But here's the thing. We, it's it's kind of like a lot of us assume that as he was already a big content creator, then he linked up with Square One and started creating, you know, Seed to Harvest with your genetics. But that's not actually the full story. How did you guys end up linking up and how did he start running some of your gear? Matt and I have been like YouTube friends since he first started. Right. So I've been, I was on YouTube way, way before him. And then he started his channel. I'm like, Hey, you're, you're pretty good at this. And I, I subscribed to him when he had like only like 500 followers. He was wow. trying to build up his base and, and yeah, I started following him. Like you're good, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing. And then he just kept like dedicated, like you can see the dedication in, in his work. And I really admired that, you know, anyone that can dedicate themselves to anything is uh, admir- admirable to me because, you know, it really, really takes time. And, and dedication is a lot of is something that a lot of people waver on. And, and he did it and he pushed through. I know now he's taking some sort of break and, and I get it because that was his life through and through. But yeah, so basically we, we just linked up since then, and then he he asked to run the seeds, and I'm like, yeah, of course, and and then he wanted to run them, he ran them, and he, he helped grow Square One Genetics and exponentially, and and yeah, I give a lot of credit to him. Wow, no doubt, yeah, that's how we ended up finding you, right? And and seeing, I can't remember the exact first video I would have seen that he was growing, like banana buttercups, maybe or something around those. Uh, that I would have seen, but what was the first strain that that Mister Canucks ran from Square One? I I believe, if I remember correctly, it was maybe the ocean fruit. I think the ocean fruit, and then the the BBC, the banana buttercups S one. Gotcha. I think that really turned a lot of people's heads because, yeah, it's just crazy frosty. Right. And then I remember I, I did my first run. I had Nana. 
Nana glue going in there and just totally randomly, like by casualty, I finished my seed to harvest, you know, and I got it posted and it was like the day before, the day after, the same week, I think it's Mr. Kind of running his same thing of the, of the, the Nana glue. And it was so cool for me, you know, seeing that channel well before I started mine to go, oh my God, I'm running that strain too. And then to look at his, he was doing this beautiful pheno hunt. I think he ran, he ran a, you know, the full pack, which goes right into the next question, because that's something we're transitioning to here on the channel. You've seen us grow a lot of your stuff. You've seen us only pop one or two beans. And we're playing like this lottery mentality when it comes to pheno hunting. It's like, hopefully we get lucky and let's, let's go. We're switching that. We're going to be running full packs and even multiple packs. And I'm excited to do that now with square one and some Robin hood stuff. And we'll talk about which ones we should do here in a second, but why don't you give us top three tips for, Pheno hunting for, for people growing square one, whatever it may be, and they might want to do a full pack or whatever it may be, top three tips that you would give anyone for pheno hunting. For sure. Yeah. So I pheno hunt a lot. You know, a lot of breeders just are seed makers, just make seeds, right? And then that's all they do. But for me, really, the pheno hunting is my favorite part of it all because I want to see what did I do, <laughs> right? right? Did I truly screw up or did I make something incredible here? And the only way to truly know that is to do it yourself. And so number one tip is always pop more seeds than what you think you're going to need. So Beautiful. if you think you need 10, pop 20. Because you could, you could always cull those later. You could always cut them out if you don't have the space one. But always pop more than what you think uh, you're going to need. Uh, number two, have a goal in mind. Don't go in blind. Like Go into a pheno hunt looking for something because that's going to give you uh, some sort of direction. And third tip, uh, be patient. Not every plant is going to develop how, how you might think. Some are going to develop a little bit slower, especially from seed. And so to tie in that third tip, run, run it from clone. Get your initial uh, selection of what you think might be keepers and run them again from clone because it's going to be different. It, it will be different from clone. It won't be dramatically different, but you're going to be able to pick on differences. So Maybe that one you're like, yeah, this one's good. And then you run it from clone. You're like, wow, this one's great because, well, now it has adequate light, adequate space, and adequate attention from you because now you have a smaller pool and more space to focus your attention on. Got you. That's sick. I loved it. Those were great three tips. And those are three things that I can actively start doing right now with my small pheno hunts. And just to, to close that loop, when you say pop more, when are you and and maybe get rid of some in the process? Are you getting rid of some in veg even, or are you wait until flower and then kicking some? How soon are you are you getting some out of the garden when you say and you're popping extra? Uh, all, all throughout the whole process. So uh, through germination, if, if if something's really lacking, and and I have a good pool that's quite a bit I have, I'll I'll call it. I'll kick it out uh, in veg. If I see something that doesn't quite have the structure that I'm looking for in veg, doesn't have the vigor, I'll kick it out uh, early flower. You know, something can harm, right? So if something yep. harms, kick it out, right? Don't don't waste yep. your time. Yeah, the only way as a community, you know, because I think of us as a collective, you know, it's not just me making seeds versus the world, right? So the only way as a community we're going to collectively improve the gene pool is if we all have rig rigorous standards, right? We're not just kind of letting shit slide by. Uh, select really, really tightly. Be picky. Good point. Great point. That's, that's, that's something that, that will totally affect the future of where we're going with genetics. And if everyone breeding was thinking like that, I think we would be totally in a different place in five, five years from now. On the second point, as far as selecting, have a goal in mind. What are some of your goals? What are some of the people doing their first pheno hunts? What are some of the things that they could be looking for? You know, for me, one of the first things that comes to mind would be like, oh, I'm going to look for terps, terps, terps. Give me some fruity exotic, you know, and that's just one of the things. But what are some of the options for selection um, that, that we could have set as a goal? So for me, it changes every time. So it, it depends what, what, um, what project I'm working on. So I could have something that I want to improve yield. So my goal will be yield. Right. So recently I just did like a blueberry fritter hybrids and my goal with them was terps and yield. And I found a lot of that and I selected for uh, terps and yield. Uh, I have a Gorilla Butter F2 across the blueberry fritter that has incredible terps and yield. And so that's kind of one of the complaints that a lot of people complain about with the banana buttercups. It's like uh, not quite yielding like monstrous. You know, there's some females that yield well. But some people just want to grow those buds that are just gigantic. And 
Uh, so for that project, that's what I selected for. And that was the main goal. So if I'm looking for yeah. terps, then, 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 you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go through seeds that I know are going to have good terps. I won't just, Hey, I want good terps and it pops something that may not have good terps. Man, I would love to come and see your breeding chambers one day. That would be the coolest like tour and definitely putting it on my bucket list from, from what I've seen already on social media and YouTube, um, which I can't wait to get to what's coming here in the future. But one of the things I would love to ask you, because you just touched on it a little bit in, in, in one of the last questions, but especially asking a breeder who's been in the game and, and you know, done it from, from ground up yourself, Titan, what separates a good breeder, someone who's trustworthy, to breeders that maybe are not good or not trustworthy? What are some of either the practices, mentalities, or things that happen that separates those two? Really, what I've noticed is you're not really – the, the good breeders aren't really trying to sell you on how great their genetics are, right? They let the genetics do all the work because if you have great genetics, there's nothing more you have to do. Um, you just, eventually, it, you create something great and eventually it, it will catch on. Eventually, you'll be grabbed by the correct avenues, like someone like yourself, you know, who you guys do great work with everything you touch. Everything I've seen, you guys have really put a big spotlight on and made it just shine, you know, so... And and great growers are going to look for great genetics. And that's right. how I, I view it. Yeah, good point. No, and everything we've seen so far has been rock solid. And I can't wait to see what's coming next, you know, uh, which we'll get into in just a sec. But I have one last question, too, about the breeder side, because there's a lot of people, myself included, that maybe don't want to become breeders, but want to kind of get our our hands dirty at some point or have this goal one day to to cross our own right we we each every single person listening to this has their own favorite and every time we hop on a live or ask for feedback it's so cool the amount of diversity we get back of the best strain and everyone is right when they say this is the best that's the best for you and you know we each have the our, our different opinions and at some point we might want to cross what are some very basic tips you could give to someone who might want to you know create their own seed stock or just mess around and and you know cross their own two strains without really necessarily talking to people who are trying to become breeders? Uh, just do it. <laughs> just, you know, just get into it. That, that just, you know, get into breeding. The only way that you're going to learn is, is by doing it. If, if, if there's, there's no other way, just get in, do it. And you'll see uh, what happens with your selection. You know, you'll see, Okay, I selected this. I think this is good, and you'll cross it, and you'll you'll run the seeds. You'd be like, okay, well that that was probably crap, or wow, that was great. That's the only just just yeah, just create something. Beautiful. And would someone like listening to this? Because there's a lot of newbies, and I'm slowly learning so much. But like, if I have two of my favorite strains, and they're both feminized seeds you know they both started from feminized seeds are those am i able to take those two and potentially cross them is that a bad idea and and what what are your thoughts on that no you're totally clear to cross them so uh, a lot of people think you know herms right that's probably what you're thinking it's like oh my yeah. gosh i'm crossing these two quote unquote herms to each other but uh, really all all plants are hermaphroditic by nature, all cannabis plants, right? So they all have the potential to do that. That's why you can reverse a plant is because it's in the, the genetics to be able to do that. So right. what you really need to be worrying about is, is this plant stable that I'm working with? If it's not stable, then you're going to pass that down to the progeny. So everything that you're selecting for will likely get passed down. Got you. That's sick. And it's such a wormhole and so much more to talk when I can't wait to dive deeper into just the specifics on breeding. And I think at some point, even to have you back on to talk just breeding, I think today, it's just exciting to know a lot more about Titan, your history, you know, both uh, Square One, Robin Hood, and especially what's coming next. So I would love to talk about that if that's cool with you and talk about what's coming for Square One here in the near future or Robin Hood as far as crosses, projects, what are you working on? So I'm always, always, always working on new stuff. So you don't have to worry. There's always going to be new stuff. I have like a relentless pursuit of improvement in my brain. But uh, beautiful. more recently, what's coming up next is more uh, grape rock candy to banana, banana buttercups hybrids. I'm running those myself. So pictures of those should be dropping soon. And then after that, some red hot cookies, fems. 
and then more grape rock candy, banana buttercup stems. And then let's see, maybe some banana buttercups, reg seeds. A lot of people have been asking for that. So that's going to be awesome. I'm personally excited for it because uh, that's going to open up the door for a lot of people to breed. Honestly, I think that's why a lot of people are asking for it so they can mm -hmm. jump into breeding pretty without a lot of barriers. Right. So they can get a male from previously known excellent lineage previously cool. proven excellent lineage dude that is really cool that gets me personally really excited because again you know i've asked a lot of those questions today because you know i'm already getting curious what i've thought about it ever since you know probably my first few plants like what would it be to cross these suckers but it's something i don't want to rush into and that just gets me you know excited i want to learn about it at some point we're going to document it on the channel just to see what it would be like um so knowing you know you've seen some of our videos and especially when we've run your stuff the black hole which i want to cover in a second but recommendations for home grow tv right i think there's three categories that we really want to focus on this year and we're taking a lot of requests from our viewers and we had square one come up a lot of the time so the three categories that we're kind of looking to fill this year is good for extraction something that the breeder is saying you know what we want to see this in that category kind of experimented with because we have a lot of faith there we we confidence that this should be good in the extraction side then on the terp side we got the crowd pleaser stuff like the black hole right that gassy caryophyllene pepper messy up style stuff that's great for the the cannabis cups which i also love going to just attending and competing in and then the last one something on the fruity side which i really got to see you know that ocean fruit so ex unique one on the fruit side i'm not going to give anything away yet you got to watch the episode for that on the full turp breakdown the lab results everything but filling those three categories do you have any specific recommendations for myself as a grower asking you as a breeder that you might see fit in the next little bit for us uh I instantly go to like the Robin Hood side and I think the, the, the nanas because you, you can select for fruity candy, gassy. You can select for all of those, uh, with that one. And, and it has the high, will do well in extraction. But also I think nano glue. I think nano glue would do very, very well. You guys have already grown it though. So you kind of know what to expect for that. But, uh, I don't know, maybe just crossing the black hole with the um, ocean fruit. <laughs> like, I feel oh. like you already have it. Yeah, no doubt. That would be sick. And actually, I think we should finish even a, a more of a run. Now that we're getting into hunting a little bit more, it was really cool to see those two. It was only a two by four. So maybe we should step up to a four by four, the five by 10, get more of a selection of the ocean fruit. I know I have the black hole, you know, and it would even actually be cool yeah. to, to, to throw some more into just even see, you know, we have seen some others. This one's just a winner. It was my first one ever that came back over 30% from lab. Um, and that just like, it made me feel, I was like, Oh my God, where could this go from here? So it was, it, it's, it really marked itself in, in home grow TV history for sure. Um, there's one that I keep seeing pop up a lot in your guys' discord and that's the, is it frost bag or just this frosty, crazy looking thing? um what's the name oh, of that that stream frozen frozen bag so yeah i forgot all about i'm working on bag right now so bag is berries uh in the stringent gas bag but yeah that was one of my part of one of my original creations that's monkey butter to purple punch and then selected from there Ooh. for the the bag the bag was a cut from another grower he found it and communicated with him and he was able to get it back to me uh so I, i'm i'm running that now his cut and it's just it's awesome it's incredible Dude, it's like uh banana buttercups like with more yield and uh berry and, and gas herbs so i have those coming up working on those as well so wow. yeah frozen bag any anything with bag is going to bring uh gas fruity yield and heavy trichome development yeah, that one's making noise right now on social media, especially within your community. That one came through a lot on the requests. Like, dude, you got to try that that frozen bag. And when I'm looking at pictures, I was like, dang, dude, we got to try that. Just visually, it looks so amazing. And if you're saying that's backed up with the gas, I think that one's going to be added to my list of something I definitely want to try here. And like I said, the Ocean Fruit episode coming out soon. I know you haven't seen it. I really hope you dig it, dude. We went further on research than we've done on a lot of strains here. So it's going to be a banger, dude. Yeah, I love your guys' videos. They're, they're always great. I a lot of, uh, yeah, you can see a lot of uh, time and effort. And I really appreciate that as a viewer. So. 
Heck yeah, dude. Well, just to begin, we got some crazy stuff coming this year. But to back up, to talk about that black hole really quick, um, for anyone listening who maybe has not seen that featured, you can see it in the top 10 strains we've ever grown. It's ranked up there nice and high. It's a beautiful strain with good reason. The parent genetics in that are, is that Black Mac with, is that Apple Fritter? Is that the two in, in the black hole? Yeah, yeah. So Black Mac is GMO to Mac 1. I created that. Mac 1 doesn't produce very many seeds, so you'll never see uh the original black mac really in seed form so uh, i let out a couple of packs of seeds but that was it and then selecting my cut from that and then cross that to uh apple fritter or reverse apple fritter to the black mac to create black hole Oof, beautiful and are we going to see anything coming up in the future long term short term with any of those parent genetics or or black hole itself I would I would love to work with Black Hole. I have so many projects going, but it's definitely on my radar and definitely something that I want to continue working with. Perfect, dude. Yeah, that's that's I'm you know I'm I'm always bugging you and waiting for that one. That's going to be amazing. But we'll wait patiently because we know there's so many things to try in the meantime. Um, where can uh, everyone listening, viewing right now, where are we able to find your community, your social media, and videos? So squareonegenetics.com. You can kind of find everything there. We have. Uh, the Discord posted there, YouTube links posted there, Instagram posted there. It's all there. Uh, Instagram, Square One Genetics, Robin Hood Seeds, uh, THC Titan. Definitely go check those out. And make sure you go in and throw some extra love to everything on the social media because I know there's something going on on social media right now. I don't know how it's affecting you, Square One, the brands, but this whole content prohibition that we're kind of experiencing on YouTube and Instagram, has it been affecting you at all? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I had the Robin Hood Seeds account deleted on Instagram, which really sucked. Uh, and then the Square One Genetics account, it's so close to getting deleted. I'm getting reports all the time. And then my both of my YouTube channels had two strikes and I had to take everything down before both of those got deleted. So it's really wow. difficult right now, you know, to post anything. Wow. So the best place right now to, you know, obviously go support those, follow, throw some comments down too. You know, we really got to show social media what's up. Discord has been such a cool place. Your Discord community is awesome. They're so supportive. It's a great place for, for like, you know, whether you're, you've grown Square One or Robin Hood yet or not, a place to be able to check out what like these growers are actually producing for results. It's really cool because... What I appreciate a lot, too, is it's not like everything gets shared on your Instagram. Like, it's like, oh, look at all of our growers. This is everything. Yeah, some great stuff does. But if you go in there, you just see, you know, fire after fire after fire. Um, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. And, and I think that that Discord is a great example of that. So I really recommend you guys to check that out. I'm, at, I'm definitely in there all the time checking things out. Yeah, I agree. Discord's the place to be right now. They're, they're pretty lenient on us growers, which is nice. And, and you can see you know really what other growers are getting not just what i pick out and decide to show you You can see you know what other growers are getting and and you you'll probably be pretty pleased to know that's all just as fire yes no doubt man it most certainly is well we're coming to to the end of the podcast titan i appreciate you so much coming out sharing some of your knowledge um, please, guys, throw a comment down if you're watching this on YouTube. Share the love. Share this amazing podcast because I think what we have to do is we have to have Titan out again, and we got to tackle some specific breeding questions for all those in the community looking to make their first crosses, myself included. And maybe we do what Titan said and actually take the ocean fruit, cross it with our black hole, and just make some black ocean dirty sauce, you know? That would be fire. I mean, you're asking, like, what would I reckon? I think you guys have it right there, so – that fit that's, your your needs. That's sick. And I think it's going to make for great content, us learning that and kind of sharing that journey because as you probably experienced and went through at the very beginning, you know, it, it's it's probably a crazy train ride, isn't it? It's a bunch of up and downs, a bunch of failures and a lot of learning. Yeah. And like I said, you can have those two parents you're going to put together and like, this is exactly what I want, but you never know until it's showtime and you run those seeds and get them into deep flower and you're like, okay, this is either it or it isn't. But that's part of the, the love for the plant, right? Yes. Well said. Awesome. There it is, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Check us out next week on YouTube podcast. We got them coming out at least once a month on the podcast side and weekly uploads on YouTube. So much love, everybody. And we'll see you guys very soon here on Homegrow TV.